Hi everyone, and welcome back. In this example video, we're going to use polynomial interpolation to help figure out the speed of a very hungry hedgehog. The hedgehog's speed in meters per second is known at a few different times t. t equals 1.2 seconds, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5. But we'd like to estimate the speed of the hedgehog at t equals 1.35 seconds, partway between these two data points. Well, okay, maybe we could find a polynomial curve that passes through these four points. In this case, since we have four points, that would be a cubic polynomial, right? We could use the Newton interpolating polynomial formula. Ah, but hold on a second. Doesn't that formula require our inputs, formerly x, now t, doesn't it require them to be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc.? I'm not so sure that that formula would apply in this case, where our data points are you know, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. They don't start at zero, and they're not spaced out by one unit each. So what do we do? Well, it turns out we can generalize the Newton interpolating polynomial formula. As long as our inputs are equally spaced, they're equidistant, then we can make a similar polynomial to fit our data points. The points don't have to be one unit apart, they don't have to start at zero. So let me show you this cool generalization and then we'll get back to our problem. Okay, here is the generalized version of the Newton interpolating polynomial. Now don't get too scared by the formula you're about to see because it is a little bit messy, but it's very similar to what we had before. So the setup is as follows. We start with n plus one equidistant nodes or equidistant x values. Before our x values were zero, one, two, all the way up to n, but now I'm allowed to start wherever I like. I don't have to start at zero. I'll start at x naught, and to keep the nodes equidistant, you know, equally spaced, I'm gonna add a constant h each time. So I go from x naught to x1 by adding an h, I go from x1 to x2 by adding another h, and so on. We keep going until we get to the n. So now that we have our n plus one data points, the question is, What's the nth degree polynomial that passes through all of them? Well, it's given by this expression down here at the bottom. And I know it looks pretty bulky, but let's take a moment to think about how it's similar to the expression that we had before. Looking at this thing term by term, I see that we still have our y naught, we still have our forward differences, and we still have our factorials on the bottom, right? We still go up to n factorial. The x terms also look pretty similar to what we had before. Except now, instead of having the numbers 0, 1, and so on, all the way up to n minus 1, we have our new list of terms, x0, x1, all the way up to x n minus 1. What is a little bit different is this h term that you see on the bottom. Looks like we're taking exponents of h as we add more terms. Well, remember here that h is the distance between the x values. In our old formula, that distance was one, right? We went from integer to integer. So it makes sense that that h didn't appear on the denominator. It was always one. Now we have to divide by powers of this distance. That aside, the formula is exactly the same. If you plug in our old sequence, zero, one, up to n minus one, and you plug in h equals one, you will get the exact same formula we had before. Let's try to use this more general formula to answer the hedgehog question. Based on the formula from the previous slide, we're going to have to figure out a few things. Firstly, we need this new term h, the distance between our nodes. Well, if you take a look at any of the nodes here, you'll see that they are equidistant, and the distance between them is 0.1. So that's our h value. h is 0.1. Now we still need our forward differences, right? We compute those in exactly the same way we did in the previous example. We make a column consisting of our output values, 1, 5, 12, 20, and then we take differences of each pair of numbers at a time. So for example, 20 minus 12 gives me 8, 12 minus 5 gives me 7, 5 minus 1 gives me 4, and now I do it again. 8 minus 7 gives me 1, 7 minus 4 gives me 3, and finally, 1 minus 3 gives me minus 2. Just like before, I read off my forward differences using the top line of this triangle. My y naught value is 1, my delta y naught is 4, my delta squared y naught is 3, 
and my delta cubed y naught is minus 2. We now have everything we need to write down our interpolating polynomial. Let's check it out. Okay, we have our table of values, we have our h value, we have our forward differences, and we have the expression for the interpolating cubic polynomial from a few slides back. As in the last example video, I stop my terms at 3 because we have 4 data points, right? n plus 1 data points, we end at n factorial. Also, I've replaced all my x's with t's just because the problem is stated in terms of t. But otherwise, this is exactly the same. So let's plug some values in and get our polynomial. My y naught value is 1. My t naught value is going to be 1.2. So I'm going to have a t minus 1.2 here. I'm going to divide by 0 0.1, that's my h, and I multiply by 4, the value of delta y naught. Now I go to my next term. I have t minus t naught, again 1.2, times t minus t1, that's 1.3, divided by 2 factorial, times h squared, 0 0.1 squared, and I multiply by my second forward difference, which is 3, times 3. And finally, the last term, I have t minus 1.2, t minus 1.3, t minus 1.4, I divide by 3 factorial times h cubed, that's 0 0.1 cubed, and I multiply by my last forward difference, minus 2. Okay, so we'll clean this up a little bit, because there's lots that can be simplified. Uh, here I see that I'm dividing by 0 0.1, which is the same as multiplying by 10. So my first two terms are 1 plus 40 t minus 1.2. Here, I'm dividing by 0 0.1 squared, which is like multiplying by 100, right? My coefficient here is going to be 100 times 3 divided by 2. So that will be 150 times t minus 1.2, t minus 1.3. And for my last term, what do I have? I have 0 0.1 cubed on the bottom, which is like multiplying by 1,000 dividing by 6 and multiplying by 2. So the 6 and the 2 are going to simplify to 1 third, and I'm left with minus 1,000 over 3, t minus 1.2, t minus 1.3, t minus 1.4. Oh, look at that thing. That is our interpolating polynomial. Looks pretty ugly, right? Ah, but looks don't matter. What's important here is that we were able to find this crazy polynomial by following a very simple process. The process becomes easier with practice as well. To wrap up this problem, let's remember what the problem was asking for. It didn't want the interpolating polynomial, it wanted an estimate for the hedgehog's speed at t equals 1.35 seconds. So what we can do is plug in t equals 1.35 to the polynomial. What you're going to get in the end, and a computer is definitely going to be needed for this one, is 8.25 meters per second. And there you have it, the approximation of the hedgehog's speed at t equals 1.35 seconds. This is pretty fast for a hedgehog. 8 meters per second? I've never seen a hedgehog move that fast. But to be honest, I'm a little bit more worried about the acceleration here than the speed. In less than half a second, the hedgehog went from 1 meter per second to 20 meters per second. I did say it was hungry. Maybe he's off to go get some onion rings.